Hey guys, hope everything is going well. You guys know that drill. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below. Follow me on Instagram at AIH underscore sports. Follow me on my finance channel at AIH Finance. Okay, so I've seen a few good videos by Omar at Retro Hoops Collectibles and also Dan the Cardman did some good videos on Nat Turner. And the questions were asked, is there a potential conflict of interest? Is there hanky-panky going on? So it started out with a Michael Jordan card where it clearly wasn't supposed to receive the grade that it did. And what happened was there was a marking on the card, not a marking, there was an item removed from the card so it shouldn't have gotten that high grade and now the questions are being asked is nat turner getting preferential treatment and i was thinking about this just putting on my accounting hat and just trying to think this through and also my understanding of financial markets so you have to remember that collector's universe was a stock trading around maybe 15 bucks March of 2020 from my memory and when the ownership group of Nat Turner there was also Steve Cohn and I think another individual they bought it out I think it was over $90 a share the valuation was over stretch they had to pay a premium because the market was on fire it was on it was insane and also they got to get the assets of PCGS it's not only PSA it's not only the grading of cards and in my opinion the assets of PCGS over the long term is going to be very valuable because the gold and silver market hasn't picked up to the extent that the collectibles market has. But th that's a topic for another day. So you have them buying it up, right? They have to pay a steep valuation for it. Now, what does that mean? It means you need to grade cards very quickly. They had what? Over, was it 10 million cards in their backlog? So they don't have time to grade the card as carefully as they would have to maybe a couple years back. So we're looking at the fact that they're grading it fast. So the logical explanation would be the graders, they don't have time for this. They don't have time to look through the card. They're not saying, oh, this is Ken Golden's card or this is Nat Turner's card or this is XYZ card, right? That could be the case for a non-conspiracy play where, hey, they have so much to grade. They need to uh, make the money. They need to produce the product or they need to pump out the product as soon as possible, send it to their customers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Not only that, they have to uh, be on the lookout for fraud as well. And for the higher end, I, I do believe they try to be a little more careful about the jury's out on that. So we saw this card and now people are asking, hey, is Turn Nat Turner getting preferential treatment? Very good question. And a lot of people will ask this question because Collector's Universe has many conflicts of interest, as I've stated before. They own PSA, they own Card Ladder, they own Golden Options, that's a huge conflict of interest. Grading with Golden. You could send your cards, get them slab with PSA, and it'll be on Golden's website right away. Okay? And then Card Ladder is going to come out with, hey, the record price, right? So th that's a huge conflict of interest, in my opinion. The other conflict of interest with this is the fact that the content creators on YouTube, right? Card Ladder has a YouTube channel. You have, she collects cards, she works for them. There's Carlo, Carlos, who I believe has an affiliation with PSA Canada. I don't know if he's being paid or not, but still you have 
these content creators. So that's a conflict of interest there. So people are going to ask these tough questions to Nat Turner and to PSA. Now, I'm just thinking out loud and I'm thinking, okay, suppose there is hanky panky. The first scenario I said, maybe there isn't because they have to pump out all these graded cards. What if there's hanky panky? What if someone on the inside knows they're grading Nat Turner's cards and wants to give him a high grade? Okay. I'm just thinking another step. Would they give pre preferential treatment to anybody else? Maybe, maybe not. The, the reason why I ask this is because uh, if you look at Twitter, Elon Musk came out with this new verification program where I believe you have to pay $8 a month for a blue check mark. And I think it's helpful for those individuals who have been impersonated and have a large audience and it helps their uh, just uh, lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you're just looking at that, I heard stories, or I think this was actually the truth. I think it was through Tim Pool, a guy on YouTube, and he was talking about how it appears that back in the day, people were paying Twitter employees who had some sort of way to get people blue check marks. They were getting paid kickbacks. Like some people I heard getting paid $15,000 for a blue check mark. So some people right now who are complaining about this $8 a month, they're pissed off because they already paid whatever, 15 grand to get that blue check mark. And I can now see why some people are just losing their minds. It's probably because they pay them off. And I'm just asking some crazy questions right now. Are some of the graders getting paid off? I mean, it sounds insane, but we just came off of this uh, Panini cracked scandal, right? Or this Panini logo scandal. The hologram sticker showed a barcode and people could probably detect if there's a good card in it, like a Kaboom or maybe an autograph card based on the sequencing. And I've always stated this, Sports Card Radio has stated this too. We can figure out the hanky-panky that goes on in front of our eyes. It'll take time, but eventually we'll figure it out. What happens behind closed doors? All right, this is like really putting your tinfoil hat on. But the thing is, it may not be coming from the top, right? There could be some hanky-panky going on with the graders. Hopefully this... Uh, Tinfoil hat conspiracy is totally incorrect and hopefully all the graders are doing an ethical job and per, and doing the best job they can and Hopefully this is just a mistake on their end now if it is a mistake Then with the Nat Turner cards internal controls need to be improved like Dan was saying in his video It's probably best for Nat Turner not to send his cards to PSA for grading Right? If he's buying on the secondary market, fine. But if he's buy, if he's sending his own cards to grade there, in my opinion, that's a conflict of interest. And me being an accountant, knowing about internal controls, I 100% agree with what Dan is saying in his videos. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below, guys. Thank you. Bye.